Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mediocre Takes podcast. Today, we're doing another short film slash pilot. We're doing El Ombligo de la Luna. This is about a kid and father who go to the moon. So let's just get started. Salvador meets his son Nacho, who asks him to spread his mother's ashes to El Ombligo de la Luna, or the moon's navel. Together, they go on a journey to do so. I just love how the kid is like, I want to go to the moon gives the dad the money and then suddenly they're just at the moon no explanation like they're just at the moon now and we have to accept that and i love that yes i love how nacho is so determined and like how no nonsense he was because like literally he pulled up he's like you're my dad my mom is dead you're taking me to the moon like and, and oh my gosh dude i love that's such a great way to like quickly introduce a character yeah again like it wasn't it wasn't trying to pad the time out like it was short and sweet and it got to the point which is honestly really good when everything's trying to waste your time you know when nacho start crying and his tears hit his mom's ashes they turn into stars and i was kind of expecting this to turn into a magical realism route but they just continued the story like nothing happened and i had to be honest i was a bit disappointed yeah did you notice that they turned into stars at all yeah i'm just surprised you were disappointed I don't know. I just really love like a magical realism route, you know? I don't think I know what that means. Like basically fantasy that isn't explained, like just surrealism. I don't think I know what that means. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really smart, Marco. It's not a smart thing. It's just a it's just a genre. Oh, yeah. I don't really read books. You know that. Well, you do read books. I know you do. I read the same type of books over and over again. <laughs> but yeah, it basically just means like a magical event that isn't explained. I think I'd hate that. Well, yeah, of course you would. I, I, I would have, I should have realized that about you by now. I know the whole point of Nacho's father, Salvador, was to be a frustrating character. But man, even after his growth at the end of this pilot, I still did not like him at all. Like, don't treat your own child that way. Don't treat anyone that way. Anyways, maybe that's just me because I can't forgive people. But like, honestly. It's not just you. I feel the same way. When I first saw him, like, getting angry at his son, I was like, have we forgotten the reason we're here? Like, he lost his mom. Like, the only, well, from what we know, the only parental figure in his life. His dad wasn't there. So, like, I don't, it was just so frustrating. Yeah, like, he was he was basically blaming the whole scenario on his son. Like, yeah. what? Scapegoating? Excuse me? <laughs> and then I think he was calling Nacho's mom a pendeja. I, f I honestly don't remember what that word means in English, but it does mean, I think it means like basically bitch. So honestly, like, excuse me, not just mom is dead and you're doing, and you're acting like that. He also like compared his, his, uh, his mom to him. I don't know. I just, ew, he, he, mm, I feel like he, they wrote him like a little bit too, too unredeemable for our yeah. taste, I guess. Yeah. Because I think he's had like, you're just as stubborn as your mom or something like that. And yeah. he, he said it in a way that was clearly trying to be derogatory i just could not forgive him after everything he said you know yeah i love all the scenes where we were at the moon like the the scenes whenever the characters were at the moon was really beautiful and i just needed to mention that so this short pulled a disney so quick with the dead mom i was not expecting such haste was i the only one who thought it was funny that the dad told the kid no drinks in the car as he was smoking in the car like, tar and cigarette smell is fine in my car, but a juice stain? I think he just said that to be mean to the kid. Yeah, which just makes him even more unredeemable. Eww. Fuck that dad. Honestly, fuck that dad. Yeah. Non literal yeah. sense. Yeah. Fuck that dad. <laughs> and so what if I cried when Nacho thought he failed his dead mom by not fulfilling her dying wish? Anyone with or without parental issues would have. It was a very beautiful scene. Overall, I think this is a really beautifully animated short film. I just can't stand the dad. And the dad really takes this whole thing down a notch, like a lot. But yeah, Nacho was fine. Everything else was fine. But my god, that father was horrible. And I, I don't want to watch this again just because of the father at all. He was just so horrible. So I was initially interested in the short film because it took place on the moon and I canonically love space. And I should mention the animation was great. The background scenes in space specifically were beautiful. I loved them. But the actual story of the film was also beautiful. I also hate the dad, but I also think that like Nacho and Nacho's story and like his journey was so 
interesting and emotional that I'm able to not as, not not overlook the dad, but sort of just ignore him <laughs> and focus on the kid. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I don't think I hate it as much as Marco does, which it's understandable why he hates it. The father was insufferable. I don't hate the short film itself. I just really hate the dad. I just want to make that clear. Anyways, you guys, that's our thoughts on El Ombligo de la Luna. If you want to send us a voice message on Spotify for podcasters, there'll be a link in the description below. Also, we have social media, which will all be in the description. And that's everything. So goodbye. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>